Hello. Hi, everyone. Okay, so I'm going to get right into it. Um, I um, have chosen um, for today um, the West African Slender Snouted Crocodile. It's a forest animal. I'm also from the rainforest area here in Ghana, so it's kind of my natural sibling. It's nationally protected by the Ghana Wildlife Law, but unfortunately it's a law that's not really enforced. And there are a few within wildlife protected areas, but most of um, the crocodiles live outside of the protected areas. Their protection actually then will require quite a lot of community awareness and support. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how animals and crocodiles generally are seen within our ontologies and how we might um, increase the, the, the respect and the sacredness and the support um, that we have for animals um, historically um, and how we might reconnect with that. The crocodile has gone down, I think, by about 70 to 90 percent over the last 75 years. And in some areas of West Africa, it's, it's become completely extinct. So in Burkina, in Guinea, in Guinea-Bissau, in Togo, I think Mali and Senegal. So lots of the areas where the West African slender snouted crocodile um, was prevalent, it's, it's gone completely, it's become completely extinct. Um, that's due to several reasons. It's agricultural expansion, it's gold mining, which is polluting the waterways, there's unregulated hunting, and there's also the depletion of their prey, which obviously they feed on. I just wanted to show you a couple of images. Um, we have a, um, a language in, it's a pictorial language in Ghana. It's an Akan language called the Adinkra. Um, and these are symbols um, which are philosophical. A lot of them are animal based um, and it's really kind of speaks to the interconnection of humans, plants, animals, and how we can learn from animals. This is a dentium, the crocodile. Um, and this um, um, saying that goes with it is that the adaptability of the crocodile who can live in um, the water and breathe air at the same time. We have this symbol as well, which is also dedicated to the crocodile. Um, and if you look, it's an abstraction of um, the crocodile, two crocodiles sharing the same belly, um, but having two heads. So this idea of interdependence with, with our differences, we can still be united. Um, and then this is one of our gold weights, our Khan gold weights. It's quite hard to see, but if you can see, it's a crocodile with a mudfish in its mouth. Um, and it's basically saying, um, don't eat your neighbors. Um, don't, you know, don't eat in the same um, waters that you live in and you inhabit in. And all of these symbols, all of these Adinkra symbols are, are really to show us that animals can show us a way forward. And it speaks also of the kind of respect that we had or we have had for animals, which are very much part of it. We also have quite a lot of mythologies around the crocodile. So in the Paga region, for example, crocodiles are sacred and therefore they're not hunted. It's taboo to kill them. And the mythology is that the founder of the Paga people, he was called Nave, he was on the brink of death, and a crocodile led him to safety. And so it's taboo to kill them. And also it's said in that region that mysteriously when a crocodile dies, also a great person dies. So the, the crocodile somehow embodies the spirit of that person. The same is true in Tongo in the north of Ghana. But unfortunately, I'm sure as, as many of you know, um, because of the kind of colonial encounter, a lot of these beliefs that we had, the spirits of animals, the spirits of rivers and of stones and of trees um, were sacred. And, you know, we pour libation to a tree before we cut it down. Um, we, we ask its permission. We, we kind of speak to it. Um, has, has kind of gone out a little bit. And so the idea of, of um, getting communities to feel responsibility for the animals, for the environment, I think is very much about reconnecting with something that has been part of us um, for, for, for centuries and centuries and centuries.